Hello, friends. It's Thursday night, 7 p.m. on the East Coast, and you know what that means. It means it's Thought Flow time. I'm going to introduce or invite some of our friends. Hello, Chuck. Happy Thursday. Thank God this week is almost over. I feel like it is the week of a thousand Tuesdays, which I know I say a lot, but it really does feel that way to me. <sighs> Great stuff to talk about tonight. It's been a very busy news week. And uh, aside from that, it's just been a very busy life week. So we're going to get the convo started. There you are. I love this hour. Hi, Nikki. Hey, how are you? I am okay. You can't hear my heater in the back, can you? Mm -mm. Okay, good. So I was going to put on my earphones, but I probably accidentally disconnected. No, I hear like a tiny little word just because you said, but no, it's ambient. Don't, don't, don't. Leave it. It's fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good. You know, I turned on my iPad and it said, um, normally at this time, it gives me the little Instagram um, icon and it's like, you're on Instagram normally at this time. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, damn. It's like, get to work. <laughs> oh, okay. Robin, that's funny. I just read if it's ambient, I'll fall. And I was thinking fall down. Like it's ambient, not ambient, but asleep makes more sense good show don't fall yeah uh, the technology is getting a little bit creepy because it's like shouldn't you be doing this no i don't want to and i've got alexa telling me it's time to make lunch and i'm like oh because i don't like alexa anyway all we do is fight but yeah. you're the human <laughs> turn her off i do but glenn loves alexa she doesn't understand a damn word he says but I mean, he's like, Alexa, <laughs> what time is it? Alexa's like, <laughs> See? and Glenn's like, play, uh, it, Alexa says she's playing the New York Times bestseller list. And then they're arguing back and forth. And I'm like, <laughs> and now Alexa's playing music. Alexa, stop. Oh, wow. Is this any indication of how the night's going? Wait, I have to, I have to fix my light. I was in a workshop today. Keep talking. This has been my whole day. It's a day of nonsense. But, you know, hey, the sun came out for zero minutes today, so I guess I should be excited. You know, no fireballs falling from the sky. I don't know. But, um... You and I started the day at 7 a.m., 6 a.m. your time with some interesting news stories. Yes, what a week this day has been, Robin. I agree. It's been forever. <laughs> what a week this day has been. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it was accurate. I think it's a very accurate statement. Well, I had just been listening to on NPR and had just um, seen across my little news feed on my phone um, the the Supreme Court justices who just let some gray matter just pour out of their head. Was it already there to begin with? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, you know. I, I just don't understand this conversation. I just, you know... I just don't understand the conversation. I, I, I just don't understand. I mean, I, I just don't understand the people who just want to be taken back to, I don't even know what time that was because it's, I think Dan Rather wrote, um, he, he, he made a statement on Facebook that a friend of mine posted and, um, you know, one of the things that really stuck out with his comment was, or his statement was a statement. You know, he said, 
coming from someone who was here before Roe v. Wade. And I was like, oh, yeah, because, you know, some of us, and he spoke to that, he, you know, he, he spoke to how it's just been um, a given that as a woman in this day and age, you would be able to go and have an abortion. Because it's healthcare. <clears throat> because it's healthier. And because of all of the things that come with um, when you can't afford a child. And so when you're no, forced. I, care. I didn't say it's healthier. Abortion is not like carrots. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I took it to mean the procedure. I, oh, I, well, I mean, it's definitely healthier than the alternative. Yeah. Sure. But I don't know. So that, that there was that. And then, of course, you sent me. Um, <laughs> You sent me those articles about the, the theater teacher. I was just like. <laughs> people, people. Well, let's start with that first topic because I've heard something today. I, and I, I've seen these stories here and there, but it was a kind of a synopsis of all of the cases where women have been jailed for miscarriages. And we've talked about this briefly in the past, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think it, this really, really needs to become a more dominant part of the conversation as well. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, in some of the cases that I was watching and reading about, um, you know, the mother had taken illicit drugs. And even though it wasn't proven that that's what caused the miscarriage, that is what the court latched on to. And there you go, incarcerated for a miscarriage. But in other situations, one in particular, the woman was incarcerated for 11 years. She pleaded guilty because her public defender, who probably had 11.4 seconds to look at her case, told her to do that to save her from 20 years in jail. She pleaded guilty thinking she would get a, a much smaller sentence she got 11 years and she was not using illicit drugs and where the the slippery slope i mean i mean there's so many places that are slippery slopes on this one but it's just like a straight wall down this is it's a disaster like a, like a cliff <laughs> into the deepest of hell that's on fire and snowing but you know, all of the women who are out here sacrificing other woman, women to maintain their social status or whatever it is that they're doing or their, their love of the Lord or whatever, what they have to realize is that now you have made sure that women are not able to have any sort of control or autonomy over their bodies. If mm -hmm. some dude in a black cloak or gown or robe, whatever you call those things, robes, that's what judges wear, decides that you did it on purpose. You fell down on purpose. You got hit by that car on purpose. You were in that automobile accident and you should have been driving slower. You shouldn't have been in that crosswalk. You are responsible. And that is something that is <clears throat> problematic. Or that you just had a spontaneous miscarriage because they happen. Uh, well, no, not, <laughs> not, not in Oklahoma, not in Arkansas. Not in Texas. Well, I mean, nothing happens in Texas. And Florida. I'm sorry, California. Even California. Oh, and like Robin says, but hey, let's make guns available so 17-year-olds can murder his classmates. Oh, and was he, was he sad? Him was sad. <laughs> was he sad? He was sad. He was having a bad day. You know, and, and you know, I was talking to a friend of mine today. Everyone's like, oh, well metal detectors metal detectors they said in the majority of these school shooter cases the kids don't go through the front door anyway they go in through the side door somebody <laughs> holds the door open for them yeah they have issues they have issues because somebody's opened the damn side door for them so again we can't blame the lack of metal detectors we can't blame anything and we can't blame the guns because guns don't kill people people kill people and and no metal detectors it's like dude take take some big steps back i 
I, one of the reasons that I moved to the suburbs was because I didn't want my kids going to school with metal detectors. Metal, you shouldn't need metal detectors in a school. No. You, you, you shouldn't, you know, you just shouldn't be able to buy a gun when you're 17 years old that easily. You just should, I don't. <laughs> well, he didn't that. buy it, his dad bought it, but like, why do we not, after all of this, why do we not have <clears throat> gun safes with locks why why don't we any responsible and listen i like I grew up with guns as i've said before i have no issues with guns i have issues with stupids if you don't have gun locks on your guns then you are responsible if you don't have them in a safe right period so i do i do dive into the argument with handguns about if you're needing it for protection, but it's going to take you a minute to get to the gun and the clip, then I, I do have an issue with that. I also grew up in a house with my grandfather where there was a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, don't keep ammunition in your home. Um, <laughs> My grandfather's double barrel shotgun was under his bed mm -hmm. and the shells were in his cabinet, <laughs> his closet right there. And he said, don't touch the gun. And you said, okay, <laughs> well, we all I'm not like, going to do oh, it. Okay. And we didn't. And I mean, there's so many things, you know, the, the gun argument has so many facets to it because, um, we know that in other countries, the John Q. Publics just don't have guns. And um, I think in the Nordic countries, if you're going to have a gun, um, or it could be Australia, <laughs> if you're going to have a gun, it's for hunting. And you have to take classes. In Switzerland, everybody has a gun. And you have to take classes and you have to, you have to go to the class and you have to have a certain level of skill. Um, it's not just about what it is to own a firearm. It is also, can you actually shoot the thing? Do you know, do you understand, you know, the weapon? Um, and you have to prove that you went to the class. You can't just be like, oh yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. Like, mm, yeah, I wear my mask and I got vaccinated. Don't you trust me? <laughs> Oops, sorry, no, did I say I trust you because you're full of shit. <laughs> but, I mean, but that's the point, right? So responsible ownership we're talking mm -hmm. about how you switch let me because i'm familiar with the example but in switzerland you know they have compulsory military service i believe so everybody has a gun everybody has to learn how to use the gun you have to learn i mean every bit of being a gun a, a possessor of a gun mm -hmm. you have to know it all you have to keep up with your right to have that gun mm -hmm. there are rules about storage of your gun, how you store it, where it's stored, all of these things. Mm -hmm. In the United States, we can't agree that everybody should take a weapons class if they get a gun. We can't agree on the types of guns mm -hmm. that people are allowed to have. Mm -hmm. We can't agree on mandatory anything related to the gun. You, getting back to masks and vaccines and all of that. I mean, it really is kind of an infantile argument when you think about it. Is anybody responsible for anything? I mean, I, I just want it so I can have it. Well, you know what? I would really love to have a rocket launcher attached to the top of my car. That's not responsible. No, not everybody should just be able to have it. There should be rules governing how this is managed. The rules should not be, hey, just don't shoot people. It doesn't work. And I, I, on the emotional and the psychological side of that um if you are learning to hunt and i get that because people do that um that's a for lack of a better term sport if you're learning to hunt that's at least a skill set and and there are things that you do <laughs> you know to not only keep the hunter safe um 
you know, there's all these rules and regulations. You can't just go out and decimate a population of deer and, you know, cross your fingers and hope they come back next year. I mean, there's all of... You have to throw a grenade <laughs> to kill a deer. Right? It's just you know, there's, a, there's all of these, you know, there's all of these rules. And it's like, right, the rules are there because there are things that happen outside of that individual's experience of hunting. There's a ripple effect. You know, right. there are, and, and, you know, you there are just rules but hoo-ha dude up in wisconsin wasn't going hunting it's like where did we what you know seventh level of hell did we step into that just says a 17 year old needs to be able to walk around with um are you sure he wasn't going hunting well, he, he, he was, he was going people hunting and he, you know, and like Elmer Fudd, I'm going to kill the wabbit. I mean, like he was just like living this fantasy. And dang, like, harmony is like, harmony it is, like, is. <laughs> it is, it, there's a skill to it. And there, and all of these things are expected to be respected, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, I'm trying to, it's like, you you went with an assault rifle and you you mission accomplished right and then it's like so you want to be 17 years old and that is what you want in your history again i i'm not exact i think he like a lot of other people got caught up in all of the rhetoric but the difference is, is that he's a teenage boy, mm -hmm. 17 equals 12. <laughs> and, and to be honest, he got, I think he got swept away. I, you know, I, I don't think that, I, I don't think that he, I think he will be harmed in his own brain about the result. Mm -hmm. But I think that the adults that were in his sphere all failed him. Yes. If my son showed up at your house to protect your home and he had a whatever kind of gun, I don't care if he had a Nerf gun, I would hope you'd say, have you lost your damn mind? Get in the house. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call your mama right now. That's right. That's right. I mean, I'm not going to say here's a beer, sit on the perch and wait for people to come by. Right. Again, there's, we have created this, this climate climate not climate <laughs> we created this climate of my rights my rights my rights my mm -hmm. rights mm -hmm. if i decide you have the same rights as me then that's okay so then it's our rights but if i decide i don't want to share my rights with you my rights right. trump yours we right. can't keep doing it it's no longer a civilized society once that becomes the thing it's it's anarchy and that that statement that you just made sums up the abortion issue mm -hmm. my rights trump your rights right or you know let's make it about the non-borns unborns rights when i mean one they're not asking questions because they're not viable and Two, again, if you follow the science, it, it just doesn't even make sense. It's a nonsensical argument, period. Right. But here um, we are. But here we are. But here we are. And, and Dan Rather was speaking to how it just puts women in danger. And it's women. It, it's no, it's not the other gender. And he said it, it just, he, he, he was basically, he's like, my heart just bleeds for these women who are, hey, Robin, um, because this is what it, it will do. It will become archaic. It will become back alley, underground. Um, it, will, it will become that. And it, I, you know, I'm wondering how, uh, because I know our governor, Robin, certainly speak to this if you're aware. I, I, I meant to look it up and I did not. Our governor, is not he's like nope nope he said this is against women and that's when this was going on five six months ago 
And so Illinois, you know, we sit in this really precarious position as a state because we're, you know, we're in between the cuckoos and the Cocoa Puffs. And, <laughs> you know, we are, you know, Antioch is in Illinois. You just hop across the street and you're in Wisconsin. Um, we're we're kind of by Kentucky, you know, we're not that far from Ohio, you know, we so Illinois sits in this and, and we maintain our blueness, you know, and I don't, you know, I don't know if it's blue, red, purple, but I know that our governor was, yeah, we're in between the cuckoos and the Cocoa Pops, Robin, you know, we are, but you know, our governor is, is just like, no, he's like this, we're not doing this, but then we'll become that state that, everyone's going to be flooding to everyone is trying to get to and you're going to have all to the have, problems that go along with that too that's my point you know um yeah but i, I know that our governor i i like our governor i mean he technically he is a billionaire and all of that stuff and his sister did some cuckoo for cocoa puff stuff <laughs> but you know i do like our governor and you know ab about the people stuff he really just kind of goes yeah no that's 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 not my place to tell a woman what to do with her body. And I was like, ooh. But it seems like that is becoming a dying breed in this current state of politics, yeah. right? We've got um, Ding Dong Swizzle, what's her name? Uh, Larm Brobert mm -hmm. out here calling people names and apologizing and then taking it back. And I mean, <laughs> can we talk about for a moment how offensive it is for me as a citizen to hear a lawmaker call another lawmaker a member of the jihad squad? I mean, what kind of piece of garbage are you? I am sorry, but comments like that can get somebody killed. And why is that just okay? Where's the, it goes back to that standard, right? Where aren't you, shouldn't you have just a basic level of respect but then you have, um, what's his name, Missy, the um, the old crazy white guy who Pick basically- <laughs> Louis the Gomer. One, the one who created an, um, a cartoon. That would be um, Ghost. Me Paul Ghost, Ghost, yeah. <laughs> Why is that okay? You basically threatened your colleague and you can say that that's not what you meant by it, but the reality of it is, is it is what you meant by it. Well, remember what he said was, something to the effect of, oh, well, it doesn't matter because it was just a cartoon and people need to stop being such snowflakes. Well, okay. Now, we're supposedly teaching our children to be better. We're trying, to, again, it comes back to that idea of a civil society. Um, I remember mm -hmm. before the bloviating kumquat was elected, the Tea Partiers and the people on the right were very much against the idea of, uh, what was it? What do they call it? Um, political correctness. You know, we need to just mm -hmm. need to go out there and we need to say it like it is and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? I give them credit because people are saying it like it is. Mm -hmm. They're letting their, as you would say, freak flags fly and saying whatever they want to say. Mm -hmm. But to what end? How is this benefiting who we are as a society? And on the world stage, we look like the toilet that Drano can't even help. It's so bad at this point. And the worst, hi, Brian. The worst, worst, worst part about it to me, again, is that it is so reckless and flippant because we have a, a populace that is going to rallies with guns over mm -hmm. masks. I mean, we are literally on the, the hair trigger it wouldn't take much no. to incite so a level of pain. violence. And what do we have? We have Kevin McCarthy in the House saying, hey, you know what? When we take over the House in 2020, whatever's coming up, what's this next election? 2022. When we take over we, again, we I'm going to reinstate Taylor Greene and Gomer, uh, Gosar mm -hmm. back to their, their committee posts. It's mind-boggling to me. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, the Democrats are like, look at my needlepoint. <laughs> home sweet home. <laughs> what 
and the actual <laughs> F is going on. What, to me, good old Nancy Pelosi, I, I mean, I don't know what she's doing, but why was she not out here screaming and yelling? Why, is, why are the Democrats not coming together and being like, you know what, this is it, this is it. We are drawing the line. We are not going to let this kind of behavior continue. Yeah, I'm not sure what the end game is for that. And, you know, the thing of it is, is that um, the others, all of the other groups that are othered, um, they're getting tired. And Misty and I were kind of speaking about this last week where it's like, you're, tired, you're getting tired of trying to navigate. You're getting tired of trying to um, say, I belong here. This, this, you shouldn't be making a space for me. I should have a space. Now, where am I going with this? When you have people, we are being put in a position where basically we're going to have to fight for our lives. Not just, not just going to the Starbucks. Because... Our governance, our body of governance is corralling people. Okay. And if you can control half of the populace, you can control half of the populace, then by saying, no, you cannot have an abortion. So if you can control half of the populace, that begins to like, you know, envelop like the blob, right? And it just keeps growing. And now you're going to start stripping away the rules and the, pardon me, the rights of women. And then that's going to lead into anyone who says they're a woman. So whether they be transgendered, whether they be biological, whether they be lesbian, right? You're a woman. So these, what you think is your right is actually not your right. But then that's a short step to corralling gay men. That's a short step to then breaking people down into a class or a caste system, mm -hmm. which already exists. Because we know that the notion of black and white was instigated by whites. We know that. We know that this idea of you being black, identifying someone as a color versus where they're from. These are all the same thing. And when you strip a person's personhood from them, mm -hmm. When you make them an other to the point of ostracizing them from a community. Correct. Well, what do you get? You get compliance in, in a way because they either shrink or they disappear. Mm -hmm. they, they remove themselves. But either way, they're no longer a problem. But I think this is what these ding-dongs aren't getting. In my mind, the level of incitement that's going on, this whole level of freak flag flyedness is as I like to just make up now. Um, I, I do believe there's a tipping point, and I actually believe they may have gone too far already. I think that the whole individuality at all costs perspective mm -hmm. um, that we're seeing displayed primarily from the right, um, I don't necessarily know that you're going to be able to get people that are that single singular singly minded toward themselves and their own ideas to fall back into that pot that they want them to be in to keep them under control the crabs are bursting out of the barrel and they have guns and so really what they've created just in my holy disaster mind we've got one side with guns that's like i i've got to fight for my freedom no matter what and we've got an other, the other side that's like, I have to fight for my freedom for whatever what. And they're on opposite poles. Right. But the people in between, they, they don't really, they're not attracted to either pole. They're the ones that are going to shrink away. 
this government had better be very careful. I think it's making big, big problems and it's, mm -hmm. it's not going to be able to solve them because they don't have enough brain cells to put together to solve them. There's no, I don't see how you bring <coughs> people together at this point. As long as we stay together as individual communities, I think we're okay. But when I drive down my road and I see a number of Trump signs, like way too many Trump signs, like the, uh, was it Brandon, whatever it is. I, I mean, I didn't even know what that was, whatever the whole, somebody help me with my words, <laughs> but it was the way that they refer to Joe Biden, but they call him let's go Brandon or something like that. It, it makes no sense to me. I don't get it. But there's all these signs around town, and this is what it is. And I think they thought it was like a, an inside joke, but it's on the news, so it's not inside anymore. I mean, it's a bigger movement than anybody wants to think, and it's culty. And cults get messy. Cults are maniacal. I mean, the whole purpose of a cult, which is why it is so named, is to control. Listen, I've always it's... said that I'd be an excellent cult leader or a church <laughs> leader. Um, but I'm not going to go that route. Thank you. <laughs> hey, sissy. Hey, sissy. <laughs> but I, I definitely think that, that it's a thing. I think I, I do think that we are in a point of devolution. Hmm. It's going to be really, really hard to cobble back from. Because even if one side, so let's say the other side wins 2022, where do we go next? What's next? What are you going to take away next? Well, the thing that I think is really interesting is there's all of this stuff that we're doing sort of in-house, right? But other countries are looking at us. The Chinese president spoke about our military being lacking um, the population to fill our military being lacking. Hang on real quick. Brian, until Trump's dealt with by either New York or Georgia, the cult is still going to live. The cult is bigger than Trump now. Mm -hmm. Because after Trump, you've got DeSantis, you've got Abbott, you've got uh, the rest of the merry band of ding dongs. Um, so <laughs> Trump was the figurehead. He was put on top for a reason. They didn't expect him to be able to take it this far. Now he's overgrown what they were planning to do with it. But this level of diabolicalness is, this is what they wanted. The best way to get power is to break people off into factions. Well, and I don't, I, I think Robin. Trump was a means to an end for them. I don't think that they really saw him as someone who, um, could lead no I, absolutely i mean yeah that was just a head. means that was a means to an end that was not something you know that this is not i ain't gonna put it past them to be thinking steve bannon for that but i don't think that was that was trump for them but other countries are looking at what we're doing and looking at how we are literally breaking down our own systems the ones that we've conquered other countries over mm -hmm. and tried to force upon them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you break us down too much more. People are going to be seeking revenge. I'm just telling you. Well, but it's not even just that. It's like in so many ways we are ill prepared in so oh, for many, you know, in so many, and, and we are, I mean, whereas you have, I mean, let's, you know, we're, we're, we're in this pandemic. And we are, we are in this pandemic, but we are still, we're still having the same conversations that we were having when the pandemic first started. We're still, what started, we're still allowing people to make individual choices that undeniably affect whole communities. They're talking about in upstate New York, some of the clusters that they have, they're literally families in the hospital together. So, and other countries are just saying, no, uh, you're going to get a vaccine. Who just, who just, um, Australia is arresting people who, and, and some, another country is attaching a fee. You don't want to be vaccinated. It's $118 or $113 a month. And they, I think they were so funny. They're like, well, it's not really a tax. It's like, this is what it costs 
when you don't want to be vaccinated. This, these are the monies Germany. that have to be. <laughs> and so yeah. other, other countries, they're, they're like, no, because they're like, look, this is going on and this is going on and this is going on. But yes, Germany is about to mandate for vaccines. And it's like, because they understand that it's an, it's, it's, it affects the population, period, the whole you know? Again, though, we're in this position because rather than considering it a public health issue, we looked at it as a political pogo stick. Just mm -hmm. like guns, guns should be a public health issue. Abortion, that is a public health issue. As mm -hmm. much as an individual issue, what's about to happen to women will be a public health issue. Mm -hmm. We've got a bunch of kids in, the, in homes and we're building orphanages right. and all these things. Right. That's going to be another issue. You know, we need to be thinking broadly upon this, uh, over the simplistic, oh, well, I don't really like that. And that goes against my fill in the blank. And therefore, oh. I need to eradicate it. That's bullshit. And other countries have the morning after pill and other abortion over pills the because over the counter because they're like, you shouldn't have to jump over bridges and duck under, you know, valleys and, you know, <laughs> bear crawl your way <laughs> they're like no they're like oh you know what you had some fun last night you, you didn't do what you were supposed to do here you go or something happened to you something that you, you didn't what? ask they're for you like that you know what they're like they're like here you go it's right. not like I mean, here you know you can tell when somebody is like trying to get something at the pharmacy that you know someone might look at them for because they kind of go in like this <laughs> I need the, that pill. <laughs> the pharmacist is like, what? <laughs> I need the morning after pill. <laughs> the pharmacist is like, oh, you need the morning after pill. What is it? Person, are you, oh. it's like, are you something? Are you 46? We don't have you, that yeah. We can't have those things. <laughs> no, we can't, we can't have anything. We can't have anything that says we could actually be responsible and hold ourselves accountable for our behavior. We can't have anything like that. Well, unless you're 17 anyway. and you want an AR. It's, it's yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a problem. And, and again, when you, when you put people in corners, mm -hmm. they either lay there and cry or they rebel and they break out. So, yeah. And being able to go into a store and get a morning after pill, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's freedom. That's what freedom looks like. Your government, and this is not to say that all of these other governments in Europe are, you know, all rosy and living in their glass houses. Nobody with, is. Nobody yeah. is. Fine but, my but country, we have Ms. Landia, it would be great. It would be so bad <laughs> I mean, free Pilates for everybody. But, you know, I mean, they haven't caught on yet in the rest of the world. But it's like everyone is screaming about their freedoms. I'm like, no, that's a freedom. That's a freedom to be able to go in and get something that you need privately with discretion, pay for it, and be on your way. That's a freedom. Um, it is a government's responsibility to look out for its people. But again, the governments that are talking and discussing and heavily considering mandates for vaccinations, they're also governments, oh, wait for it, that provide health care for their... <gasps> health care. Health care. <laughs> yeah, we don't get that. <laughs> and so... <laughs> You're letting people run around all willy-nilly. They don't have health care. And you've got to deal with it. And now you're like, oh, wait, it's costing a lot of money to have the employee tested every three days to see if they're COVID positive. Oh, wait, they're COVID positive. And now we have to pay for the contact tracing. Oh, wait, that person can't come to work. 
and now they can't do their job, but we don't have anyone to do that job because they created a cluster with their COVID positivity because they really knew that they were in contact. Like, this is just stupid. This is like telling, you know what, little Johnny, it is your turn to pass out the snacks, but you can't eat the snacks while you're passing them out, little Johnny. And you most certainly cannot lick your fingers and then put your hands back. I was going to say, because Johnny is the one that accidentally on purpose touches every cupcake licks his finger <laughs> and then touches the next cupcake. Everybody knows Johnny is like Squirrel Boy. I'm just saying. And it's, it's like you're looking at things and you're like, I know this is going to happen. I, I don't need a supercomputer. This is what's going to happen. Common sense, Murphy's Law, the universe... They all say this is going to happen. And sure as all get out, it happens. And everyone goes, well, I don't understand why, <laughs> I don't understand why that happened. <laughs> but yes, the countries that are saying we need to do this for the population, this can no longer be an individual decision. We must make this choice for the populace. They also understand that it is the government's responsibility to be accountable for the safety and welfare of its people. And that, to me, is the biggest difference. The United States government, does, is they have no compulsion to be responsible for its people. Well, they're too busy fighting with each other. <laughs> Making up stories and, and, you know, entertaining the media. Fun dip. <laughs> On dip. Oh my God, that's a blast. <laughs> um, but the, our government, it's my tongue is burning. <laughs> I remember, you know, we've watched videos of Parliament in the UK or any, pretty much any foreign government. You know, they're going to blows. I just saw this thing of the one of the branches of government in, in Japan. I mean, they are fighting. The, the guy goes up and grabs a woman and throws her out of, the, <laughs> out of the box that she was talking in. And I'm like, how is this actually happening and they're getting stuff done? And yet, that's considered to be a respectable way to conduct business because that's the way they've always done it, one. And two, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he helps her straighten up her hair. <laughs> Fix her jacket, you know. Sorry, that got a little ugly. And then they moved on about their day. Our government isn't like that. We we just entered the toddler stage of governance, where we're throwing people out of, uh, you know, chasing them down the hall, beating up the door, and sending people in with zip ties. It, it's, it's holding the crazy. door open for them. And then smashing their heads in it. I mean, what, what is going on? Yeah, and, and, you know, again, it's kind of that situation where we're looking at all of the drama and the bananas antics here mm -hmm. while the sky is really falling over here and nobody's paying attention to it. So I read a story yes. today. It's about, um, in, in this state, one of the biggest and wealthiest counties, um, They've been having the same type of raucous school board debacle disasters that everyone else is having in the country. Mm -hmm. And they were talking to the teachers of this district who were like, you know what? Yeah, sure. This is this school board stuff is a hot mess, but we can't worry about it because we have no supplies. We have no substitutes. All the extra time we have to take just to keep the place clean enough so nobody gets sick. Oh, yeah, but people are getting sick anyway. And we can't take off because there's no substitutes. And then the majority of the kids that are in school are having major mental health issues because they've got family members sick. They've got all of this drama happening. And meanwhile, the parents are over here screaming, yelling about masks that the kids could really give a shit about wearing. Right. Again, the, the distraction and what draws the eye, what we're focused on, it's really not what the problem is. 
as mm -hmm. per usual. Mm -hmm. The drama of these ding-dongs in government is distracting from the fact that, well, Jesus, what is that January 6th commission doing anyway? It's literally like the little rabbit, the little mechanical rabbit that the greyhounds follow in a greyhound race. The, yes. <laughs> it's literally like the little mechanical you're like, ha ha, come this way, come this way. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Sid says here, I have a young woman I work with who just got over COVID-19 two weeks ago and is still walking around without her mask. I made her cry today. I flat out asked her to pick out a casket. Oh, damn. Next time, play taps. It'll be funny. At least. I mean... <laughs> you know, I'm, at the, I'm at the point, sissy. I cannot argue with anybody. I can't. I won't. I'm like, you know what? If you want to do that, then, you know, have at it. But it's just not the way. I, I have a responsibility to people around me. Mm -hmm. Even the ones I don't know. You want to wear a mask? Don't wear a mask. But stay away from me. I'm over it. Well, and it's, you know, it all goes back to being human. It all, it all comes back to being human. And you're really going to start to see now, it's very apparent now, but you're really going to start to see, you're really going to look around at other governments and how they deal with, um, you know, say what you want about China. Look, China does some stuff. We know China does some stuff. You know, they're all about stealing people's technology. They do some stuff. What about stealing people? <laughs> the poor tennis players been missing for how long now? Please. But they were dropping food to their population. This wasn't something that um, you had to. I think I talked about this last week. The 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 label essential worker. Um, it it kind of has a negative connotation for me because it's sort of like. Oh, you're the serf who still has to work regardless of the fact that the Black Plague is just... You're so essential <laughs> that you're, we're going to let you die first. It's and... like if you watch like any of those old movies of, you know, like Braveheart. Boy, did it suck. If you drew the straw where you had to be on the very front line of that nonsense. <laughs> they've got cannons, they've got arrows, and you're there. Help me, I have a spear. <laughs> I mean, it's just terrible. Who wants to be that guy? That, unfortunately, is our essential workers. Here's your little spear. Good, good luck. They've all got AKs. And essential workers where, you know, you still, you know, you still being, con people are still being confrontational. You know, Attacking people are. them for their, the policy yeah. the business that they didn't make. Yeah, people are still being confrontational. And then I'm like, where's. Where's management? Where's security? Um, where are the people who are going to enforce the rules? And of course, everything we're discussing is about the health and safety of a large group of people. Right. You know? And so it's, it's, it's sad because this is so predominant. <laughs> But all of the other things that have been going on are still going on. And then you just sort of add the, the mask and Omicron. You just, you just kind of add that on top, like icing in a cherry. And, you know, people are still dealing with, hospitals are still inundated. Hospital workers are still tired. People in truly emergency situations um, are still trying to figure out, should I go to the hospital? How long am I going to wait in the ER? Um, people, people are still getting turned away from ERs. Yes. Yes. It's, it's yeah, no, 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 no. And, and we still have drought. We still have drought. We have states whole states that are just no rain. Listen, there are states that have usually had a bunch of snow by now that have seen mm -hmm. nothing. 
I think as of last week, maybe it was, or maybe it was week four. I can't remember because I have no time, no sense of time. But Denver had had no snow. And it was only like the second time in recorded history this has happened. No snow in the middle mm-hmm. of November or at the end of November. That's a big deal. And then, yep. you know, there are cities in California that are drying up. Mm-hmm. And is it drying up because there's no water? Yeah, in part. But is it tr- drying up because they've allowed companies like Arrowhead and Nestle to purchase the aquifers and then shut them down or charge premium prices? Well, also, um, the walnut or almond farmers. I know that there are, so I've watched this whole um, documentary on how they're just in the aquifers and using them to water their crops and not allowing the aquifers to replenish. Well, how are you going to replenish when you're in a drought? It's going to take how much longer to replenish. So, I don't know. These things still exist, right? All of these things still exist. And they still exist. And then they're capped off with a pandemic and then now all of a sudden everyone is like oh my gosh it is so expensive to drive these cars this gas price what is going on with these gas prices well pushing towards hey Tammy pushing towards the things that we know I've never understood this Why, when we phase something out, why do we, A, have to phase it out, and B, why is the phase out so long? I believe that the phase out is so long because the plan is for the next administration to come in and overturn it. Why does it take 10 years to phase out something? That's my point. Phase out in two years. Um, you know, I, again, I think it's a lot of political grandstanding. It's like when someone, a politician gives a tax cut and says, okay, well, I'm going to give this tax cut for the next three years. But <coughs> the taxes are going to go back up gradually after that. So you don't really give anything to anyone. You kicked the can down the road. Right. And right. you created more issues by the deficit such a joke um but you've created more issues in the long term you know if if we're really worried about the lives of children we should be worried about the disasters that we're handing to them because of our malfeasance now i i I don't know i to me the question comes back to this you and i are always talking about equity Mm -hmm. and coming to a place where we can all exist in a way where we have personhood. You don't have to love us. You don't have to appreciate us. You know, why can't we all just get along? You know, all of that. Like, why can we not? Or what will it take to, I should say, bring us to a place as a community where we are thinking again of our neighbors? Mm-hmm. where we are caring enough about the people that are in our small concentric circles as well as the big ones so that these ridiculous theatrics that we see from the top are less affected, mm-hmm. one, um, and, and two, we can then affect more change from the bottom up. Right. What are your thoughts? I'm sorry, there's a bug. Okay. Well, my thoughts are, so um, Harmony, if I'm not mistaken, then the discovery of um, a positive case of Omicron in Colorado means that's the second state because I believe California had a positive Uh, case. There was a case in either Oklahoma or Kansas. Okay. Um, Leaving the people out of citizen, citizenry, um, 
leaving the people out of populations, why do we have government? It is to govern people. Why? I carry. Why do we have all of these things? Why, why do we have schools? It is to educate our population. And I know that, that that's not really, I mean, the, the United States public school system right now is, is really designed to educate a workforce. <laughs> um, but on a base level, we have schools to educate our population, to send learned people, not only into adulthood, but out into their communities and beyond. We have um, all of these things at our fingertips. So the FCC won't make Wi-Fi a utility, even though it should be a utility. So now all of these companies have to go around because they realize, oh shit, we have whole swaths of people who don't have the money to purchase Wi-Fi, which has now become a household staple <clears throat> because of where we are technologically. Right. We entered a pandemic which made having Wi Fi a necessity. But the FCC won't regulate Wi Fi like a utility. But, but, and so then we end up doing this thing. Oh, okay. So you're going to give these homes this craptastic Wi Fi, or even if you had the golden Wi-Fi sprinkled with diamond dust in the middle of the pandemic and everybody working from home and doing everything from home and using Wi-Fi, it didn't matter how good your internet was. It, it wasn't always going to work. So now you're going to give these people these, this craptastic internet all because you don't want to treat it the way that it should be treated for the populace as a whole. And you don't want that because, well, I mean, the shareholders won't make as much. Um, what do we have? Natural gas bills supposed to, supposed to be doubling this year? Yep. And so what does that look like for someone? I'm going to be like, y'all better wait, put a sweater on. But it's the big house. <laughs> Put a sweater on. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Bundle up. <laughs> but what does that look like for someone who is already having difficulty just paying basic bills and who can't, nothing can um, be whacked out of line, right? These are people who are living paycheck to paycheck, if not even under that, right? Why aren't these things, why aren't we doing this from the perspective of what is best? Because in America, if you haven't achieved enough to be able to afford fill in the blank, that is your fault. That is your moral failing, your ethical failing. You haven't worked hard enough. You haven't done the important things so that you could achieve. And that to me is the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I will tell you, young Misty, a bit of a capitalist, was a bit of a pick yourself up by the bootstraps type of thinker. And I will say that I was one of those people that very much said, you know, listen, <coughs> if shit happens to you, then that, you know, get your shit together and fix it. Because no, 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 no. And then I grew up and then I started living real life and I started meeting people who <laughs> went bankrupt or were looking at bankruptcy over medical bills mm -hmm. and who, you know, who did all the right things mm -hmm. and then just one little thing mm -hmm. got off and all the plates fell mm -hmm. down because yep. we do live on, on a, Razor's uh, edge. A lot yep. of us do. A very precarious perch. And and really, you can have all the money in the world in this country. You're one sickness away from ruin. 
I think that has to change. I'm sorry, my robot vacuum just started and it's very loud. I need to go turn it off. Pardon me, Nikki, <laughs> your conversation. Um, and I, you know, and I, I think that there is an assumption that I think the pandemic has shown that many more people than was suspected were vulnerable. Um, I think we view living from paycheck to paycheck you know, sort of underserved communities. No, that's not the case. There are a lot of people, you know, when I started the process of buying a house, um, my sister, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I'm like, I do, I do have some debt. And um, she laughed at me and um, she said, um, do you have more than $10,000 in debt? And I was like, no, like, why would I? You know, and she said, then you don't have debt. She said, I have clients who both of them have luxury cars. They make a good living. She's like, but I have clients who have like two, three hundred thousand dollars on their credit cards. Hmm. <laughs> right. Why? <laughs> so then you go okay, the facade of that family is beautiful and gorgeous, but the pandemic began to show their cracks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of people who live beyond their means. And these are not just poor people um, or, or lower earners these are people that are driving around and they're driving fancy cars and they live in big fancy houses and they're one paycheck away. Yep. Or an illness, like Sissy says, or you have to give up your career to take care of your mom mm -hmm. who had a stroke. Mm -hmm. Or you have to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Because we know that when a woman has a baby, her career mm -hmm. can step back 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. And that's just in the first couple of years. So yeah, it, it's a valid, valid concern. But how do we make that change? How do we pivot? How do we start to look at this as a community problem rather than an individual problem? And, and I phrase it that way because, you know, getting back to what I was saying earlier, it's, oh, you know, oh, you went bankrupt because your wife got cancer and you had to take care of her? Oh, well, lots of luck to you. Bye-bye now. Rather than, wow, this is exactly why we need to figure out the insurance situation in this country right. so that nobody has to go through what you went right. through. Or, um, and, and, oh, I don't know what I was going to say. The, the bankruptcy business, because that's what it is, I I mean the number of people yeah. who a friend of mine who is an attorney <laughs> he went from kind of um, general law a, a firm tapped him and said hey are you interested in doing um, bankruptcy law and then I just didn't hear from him for like three months he's like I am so swamped he's like the number of bankruptcies that he, he's like, I don't understand who's not in bankruptcy. Um, <laughs> so as of June 9th, Harmony says, 19th. June 19th, 59% of Americans are just one paycheck away from homelessness. Homelessness. Right. That means they're already suffering. That means they're, they're already in a dire strait. And, and that's, you know, you should be able to be guaranteed a place to live. Um, you should be able to be guaranteed um, some type of work. Some type of work. Not everybody's going to, you know, get the $100,000, dollars $500,000 job. But it's like, if you work and you have honest work 
and you work an honest day, week, month, year, you should be able to have a home. And I, and I really just feel like, I really feel like something should be off limits. I really feel like it shouldn't be that easy for someone to fall into foreclosure. I really feel like it shouldn't be that easy. Like losing one's house should be a last resort. Like you, you should have a chance to stop the clock. And that's just something else that we did not do in this pandemic. You, you, you gave, I mean, it was, you gave people rental relief, but you, <laughs> bless you, Thank but you. you paused it and you didn't do anything for landlords. You didn't do anything, you know, I mean, we you know a small rental relief right then, but you allowed the, the debts to accumulate. Correct. So when the moratorium was ended, they were in a hole that was insurmountable. Correct. Now you've got the person or family, the renter, you've got the landlord, all of them are in pain at this mm -hmm. point. Even the mortgage company, which I never feel too bad for a mortgage company, but you know, at the same time, it trickles. Well, you can't trickle upward, whatever that is. It goes mm -hmm. up like flames. Mm -hmm. and, and by the time it gets that bad, you, you can't fix any of it. Right. To take away, when you talk about trauma and when you talk about emotional devastation mm -hmm. and you talk about the type of wound that somebody may not get over. Mm hmm I can only imagine that taking away somebody's home mm -hmm. is probably the worst thing you can do to them. And my dad, when he was a kid, was homeless a lot. And home security, like he was just really, he was really, really tight with certain things. Our home was a, I mean, he mowed the lawn, like, well, through some lawnmowers too, but that's a different story. I mean, the way he <laughs> took care of our home and honored our home and all of these things was so important to him because he was homeless and it was something that he never got over. It mm -hmm. happened to him when he was young. Meanwhile, in California, more and more people with full families are living in cars. Mm -hmm. And do you know what people say about it? Yeah, we've got to do something about this homeless people. We need to get these cars off the street. We need to worry about the people in the cars. Right. There are people in the cars. There are families. There are dreams. You're not going to tell me that everybody that's homeless in that car just made stupid decisions and they ended up that way. Mm -hmm. People didn't have control when the pandemic hit. If you have wealth, it's hard for you to look. I mean, like real wealth. I don't mean like, you know, some of this right. big ass McMansion crate and barrel furniture wealth. I mean, if you have <laughs> real wealth, you can't understand. And this is the problem with our politicians, in my opinion. You can't understand what it is to be in a position where you're living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. to be in a position where your idea of home security security in terms of having your home and knowing you're going to be in it a little bit longer can just blow out the window if you right. lose your job. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to take to get people to care. Or just all of the things that come up. Certainly we know underserved communities were affected by the opioid crisis, but they weren't the only ones. There, there were middle class and upper middle class and wealthy families. And you know what? Those, um, those rehab stints, those 30-day rehab stints, they're expensive. And Passages Malibu is $50,000 a day or something like yeah. that. It might be $25,000 a day. Whatever it is, you have to do a minimum of 30 days. Uh, it's not covered by insurance. <laughs> You better get that shit done in one day. You got one day. 
but and they talk to you to let you cross through the front gates. And then, you know, assuming, right, assuming that's upper echelon, but you're still talking about programs that even at $1,000 a day, for 30 day minimum, that's $30,000. And you have to be able to get into them because they're overcrowded. They're right. And so you have people who are fighting, you know, families who are fighting all of the things that they're fighting, who, whether there's someone in their family who is mentally ill, whether there's someone who is um, drug addicted, whether, you know, whatever. Even people with good means find themselves at least once facing an obstacle that they did not anticipate in terms of their finances. Maybe it was one of your parents has to come and live with you. Or maybe it's you realize that that person can no longer live on their own. So they have to move to um, a facility, which we know how that works. The better the facility, the less insurance covers it. So if all of these converged and nobody really knew when the stay in place was going to happen. We heard rumors, but there was no month lead up. There was no two month lead up. It was like, we think this is going to happen. And then it was because it's our government. Um, the, the, it was so, um, it was so amorphous, right? It was like, Oh, we're going to do this for two or three weeks, two weeks. Oh, we're going to extend it to this time. Oh, we're going to extend it. And then it was just, yeah, just sit your butt down because we're hanging out for a while. How do you plan for that? How do you plan for that when there's no information, you know? So it's, it's up to me. It goes back to humanity. It, go, it goes back to what, why do we have these communities who makes up these communities? Well, it's people. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it goes back to people. I, I've got mine. I'm good. I'm good to go. I, I can do this. <clears throat> it goes back to people. Right. And it goes back to people taking a step back and saying, where, is, where can I insert more humanity into this circumstance? like to um because a friend of mine just sent me an article <clears throat> that i find to be we're gonna, the, we're gonna lighten this mood for a minute um because in the new york post apparently a woman was caught breastfeeding her hairless cat on a delta flight <clears throat> Yes, so the unidentified yeah. female flew from Santa Cruz, uh, sorry, Syracuse, my mind's on the sun, um, Syracuse, New York, to Atlanta, where she was caught breastfeeding her feline on the plane. A flight attendant told her repeatedly to stop and put her cat back in the cage. <laughs> However, the woman refused. <laughs> A message was sent through aircraft. <laughs> the aircraft. Pilates carries like, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Not make this shit up. I mean, uh, the Delta crew in Atlanta was alerted that the passenger in seat 13A, quote, is breastfeeding a cat. It will not put it back in its carrier when the flight attendant requested. And there's actually a picture of the communication sent. And yeah. Uh, so she, the, the cat she was, was swaddled. Left- so that it looked like a baby. Oh, hello, Vegan Barb. I'm reading this article. Hmm. Yes, the cat was swaddled to look like a baby, and her shirt was up, and she was trying to get the cat to latch, and she wouldn't put the cat back in the carrier. And the cat was screaming for its life. And, <laughs> I mean, I feel like, considering this conversation that we've been having, that this is a, a, a perfect article. But, but <laughs> let's assume she was lactating. Yeah, I don't want to assume that. <laughs> I don't. 
but then it's like, well, why was she lactating? And because, see, my mind goes to, okay, did she suffer a loss? And and was this... <laughs> okay, yes. All roads point to cuckoo for Cocoa Pups, Misty. I do realize that. But I'm still going to say, was she lactating? Like, I want to know. I'm that. not asking. <laughs> I'm not asking. I don't you know. You need to ask that. But she um the article then goes on to outline delta's policies for women breastfeeding children um i don't know of any policies for breastfeeding cats so i i don't i don't <laughs> you're funny harmony you're funny i don't even know <laughs> and we could have a really serious discussion about mental health <laughs> But I am going to say that some people just really, really love their animals. You are correct. But, and then of course I was thinking like, ow. Baby, yes, babies don't have teeth. And they're deadly with those gums. Imagine what a cat <laughs> could do. And I mean, it is a hairless cat. He was chilly, so I can understand wrapping him in a blanket because he's got no fur, but that that's a lot. That That is a... You know, some people should just drive to where they're going. Some people should go to bed. <laughs> take some gummies, take a nap. Some people should just drive. She was on the East Coast. Didn't you say she was going from Syracuse to Atlanta? Correct. See, she she could have just driven that. See, some people just That's just a drive. really long drive, though. I mean, I don't <laughs> like to drive to the grocery, which is like eight minutes away. Imagine doing that to Littles. Uh, yeah. Oh, your cat. Littles is the one that's always on the chair. Yeah, no. Oh. No. <laughs> and, you know, uh, listen, I, as a cat lover, I do talk to my animals. I carry them around. I... I you know, I mean, they're part of the family, but I draw the line of bodily fluids. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes, this was a good one. This is a good chuckle. Um, I mean, I can't, there's nothing I can say. It's, it's so sad and silly. You know, people... You don't have any words either. Your odd words don't even fake it. I, I, I don't. I, and I, you know, the poor flight attendant, because then you have to wonder what's going to happen next. You know, you have to wonder if, you just have to wonder what's going to happen next. I mean, as, and these poor flight attendants have seen it all. Like, mm -hmm. I think at this point, I'm surprised she didn't say, oh, I just can't. And just goes. Through. That's what I would have done. I would have just, you know, gone, got myself a little mini bar bottle. Just enough. That woman is having a moment with her cat. Just, just her, let them her hairless cat. Her hairless cat. Let them have their moment, and let's just move on. But, oof, that's a lot. That's a lot. So. You and I were talking earlier about this article, and I'm going to pull that one up really quickly, too, because it was like 85 hours ago when we were talking about it. The um, theater teacher? The, the drama teacher, yes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I think it's an interesting story. So this um, drama professor at, I believe it was at Coastal Carolina University, mm -hmm. said to his students basically that, you know, they get their feelings hurt too easily. They take everything too seriously. And they're like, oh, well, we'll show you. We're going to cost you your job. Okay, there's a backstory. There is a backstory. Go ahead. A teacher who it sounded like it was a visiting teacher, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, drama teacher, theater teacher, um, it was had a group of kids they were talking and you know they were basically like the, the kids were like uh, we want to hang out with other people of color non-white and so I don't know it's coastal Carolina a small school I kind of pictured it as I believe it's coastal Carolina <laughs> so it's 
So they basically wrote these names on a dry erase board of people that these guys, um, these kids of color could connect with. Right? Super innocent. They walk away, they leave, you know. Next group of students comes into the room and with shock and awe and much to their dismay, realize that they're not on the list. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. So they're not on the list and um, they are being intentionally excluded from something they don't know what, but, um, and they felt like it had racist connotations. And the school rushed into action and apology, 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 and this is not what it was meant to be. And I think the teacher who was having the conversation with the kids of color, he even said, I apologize, like all of this. And um, <clears throat> the other theater teacher who actually works at the university, he said, basically, why are people so sensitive? Well, this ruffled everyone's feathers. And he's definitely an older white gentleman. It ruffled feathers on both sides. There were black students who also made comments about um, one girl said um, after his sabbatical, he came back and he made a comment, oh, it looks like you're shaping up. And it was in response to a weight loss that she had had. Well, she assumed he, it was in response. To <laughs> he also said to her, hey, mind you, theater department, hey, there's a Shakespeare company um, that I, uh, exactly, you are exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for more diversity. She took that. And I was like, I, I, I read it and I was like, is there like another way to, that that should have been taken? And I was like, he basically did his job. That would be a call board. That would be you if uh, because I've had to put a call board together, and I would write that. And so, <clears throat> um, exactly that was my point this morning, Missy. Ernest, who has been an actor for thirty years, told National Review his comment came from the mindset that if you're going to be an actor, you're going to get your feelings hurt every day. A so hundred thousand million percent. <laughs> To the second power. So once you say something to me about the arts, I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> put, put your adamantium on. I mean, did he hit, hit you? If you didn't hit you, you're <laughs> And I'm not saying it should be that way. I'm not saying that you should be beaten up as an artist. But what I am saying is that the arts are taking a really long time to come around the corner. Yep. <laughs> Throw bombs and barbs at them for the things that they're doing wrong. But saying to somebody there's a job available for you right? because they are looking to diversify. He still wouldn't have said it if he didn't think she had the talent because nobody is going to risk their professional reputation to, to send somebody out there who can't act their day <coughs> out of the paper bag. But if that were a call for a dance company and they didn't need women, which they always have an abundance of women, they will put on the call sheet, hiring two males. Right. Now you can show up to the audition. Right. But they pretty much told you who they're going to offer a contract to. So <clears throat> all of this hullabaloo came about and this man's livelihood is threatened. So all of this hullabaloo came about and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I was like, so. And they're labeling this as hate speech, by the way. Yes. So a bunch of kids walk into um, a, a lecture hall or a studio or wherever they were, and they see names written on the board, and their names are not amongst those names. And so I asked Missy this morning, and I said, so were the names obviously black or presumed to be obviously black or did they know these kids these students i should say and knew that they were people of color but now 
<clears throat> let's all think about the time that we've walked into a classroom setting after another group has left or someone else has used that room and there was something written on the dry erase board. I literally go, oh, what class am I taking? Oh, okay, yeah, does that have oh, zero to do with me? Okay. Am I out of right my word? head? <clears throat> out of my head. It's like, you got to cry, poor me, poor me. And you got to take something to another level. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. But the irony of it is the reason that this group of kids, the original group of kids, wanted to find more kids of color to hang out with is because of exactly what transpired after those names were left on the board. Well, yeah, agreed. But I think for me, here's the conversation. The conversation is that in order for there to be change, in order mm -hmm. for there to be equity and diversity, it's going to take work and it's going to take conversations and it's going to take action that is designed to bring people together in a way that there can be a meeting. Mm -hmm. Once you find that meeting place, that common ground, then you can start forging, forging a way forward. But if you have the person over here, like I said to you earlier, if you got the person over here that's like, this is the way it was, this is the way it always should be because I don't mm -hmm. want to change because I'm old and um, I'm tired. And then you've got this <laughs> other group over here that's like, I need to change right now because you're hurting my feelings and I want a trophy. And then you've got the school that's like this. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. Oh, 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 some group's mad. Give them whatever they want. Give them whatever they want. You're never, ever going to find common ground. Everybody, in my opinion, I read this article in the LA Times. Mm -hmm. I read it in the National Review. And I mm -hmm. read it on something like reason.com. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, my consensus was the same. It was every single group in this situation was being a dick. Nobody wanted to come and, and find middle ground. They were the only people in this whole situation that were harmed. They were going to play the victim and they were not yep. going to try to move beyond that. Um, you know, when we look at this school, they had just done a play the year before, I think it was the year before, where they were, the opening scene was like slavery and a lynching and a beating or something like that. Like something <laughs> terrible and the school didn't really realize that, that was going to offend people you know so they're clearly not on top of, of societal uh, of social situations here because right. we've already decided that this isn't a, if you can't see a rogers and hammerstein show now with the original language you sure as crap cannot do that mm -hmm. kind of stuff so again <laughs> like while i understand it's all going to take time you also have to be an actor that's ready to participate, not just lie on the sides and right. throw barbs whenever it suits you. I, I feel like this is a whole huge part of what's going wrong with these discussions about DEI. You know, yes. nobody wants to really take responsibility. Everybody wants to just jump to the finished product and Correct. the margaritas. And they want to jump to the finished product and, and not, not just, because I might even be okay if people were willing to jump to the finished product and, and dive into the characteristics of the finished product and move forward from that perspective. But people want to jump to the finished product, pretend like nothing ever happened. We're going to start from here. None of that other stuff ever happened. Now we're all on an even playing field and you just hurt my feelings. Well, it's just like the principal comes <laughs> the ballet that you're doing, uh, you know, the principal shows up on the last night of rehearsal and is wondering why the rest of the damn crew and cast isn't where they want them to be. Well, you haven't been here. We've been existing, doing this whole thing over here. Right. That's Shay in. Yeah, you can't just jump to the end. No. Part of what makes it work is the labor that it takes to get to that end. And P.S., there's never yeah. an end. There's always yes. more progress, but there's never an end. It should never stop. 
when you're talking about people and humanity, there cannot be an mm -hmm. end. That's what went wrong in the 60s. And it's also just understanding that going through that, taking that journey and talking to people and having the conversations, <clears throat> the whole thing for me, it was, it was, it was, it was so not about race for me. And, and I, it was, it, the minute you step into the arts world, you are going to be judged. And like when I was, when she was saying these things that he said to her and I was like, okay, he commented on your weight or that's how she took it, but okay, whatever. Um, you're in the theater department. And then, but he also suggested that you audition for something that was looking for you. That you were the person that they, you were the, your, your archetype was who they were casting for. And you had an issue with that. But you cannot, do you always have to have a teacher in the arts that's going to make you look for the hole that's going to swallow you up? No. But to step into the world of the arts and think that you will not be judged, then don't step into the world of the arts. You're in the wrong Don't. Time. Don't step into the world of the arts if you are not going to um, understand that you will be critiqued and you will be rejected. Everybody can't be the lead. Everybody's not even going to be in the play. That's not a mean thing or a nice thing. That's just the thing. Your pit <laughs> to fill a role. <laughs> Period. Period. You know, and it, it, depending upon what it is, right? So remember a few years ago, there was this whole debate about a black woman being picked to play Hermione Granger in the uh, stage performance Correct. of Harry Potter. Well, to me, that's a very different thing because Hermione Granger is not a real person. <laughs> I mean, for some people she is. And I appreciate a, that. Yes, she topic. is Missy. I mean, I went to Universal Studios and I totally <laughs> loved Harry Potter World, but I wasn't really expecting Hermione Granger to come out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fictional characters, totally different. If they had um, Angelina Jolie play Nina Simone, that would be a problem. Oh, oh, oh. For some reason, I saw Angela Bassett in my head when you said that. <laughs> if you had Angela Jolie <laughs> playing Angela Bassett, that would really be a problem. Because no, she's they still did. alive. Um, <laughs> no, but, but they did have Zoe Saldana, and a lot of people took issue with that. A lot of people did take issue with it. I... I was on the fence with that one. I was on the fence because I'm like, damn, just pick a singer. Let me tell you something. I'm just going to put this right out here. When they do the biopic <laughs> of me, if you guys don't lobby for it to be Zendaya playing me, I'm going to hate all of you from wherever I am, and I'm going to find you, and I'm going to haunt you from my grave. It's Zendaya. She is me. We, yes, I know because who she's she is. super cute, and that's it. You she's know what I mean? super cute. Super cute, and she looks like she's 12, and even though she's like 75. Just kidding. Hey, hey Martini. Martini. No, she's like 24, 25. What I'm saying is that she always looks mm -hmm. like she's 12. You know, I for me, it's, it's about the talent. Now, the singer yeah. thing was a big thing to me. I definitely think they could have picked a singer. But in terms of an actress... Zoe Saldana was a good person. She didn't, they didn't like her because of the colorism piece. They felt like it, there was a big colorism component to it. And there probably was. I'm not going to say that there wasn't. There probably was. But when I initially looked at it, I was like, she's so talented. And what I like about her as an actor is that I don't, when she's acting and she's really into it, I don't see that person. I don't see her as her. I see her as that person. Just like I watched the Will Smith <laughs> movie about the uh williams sisters and their dad over the weekend which was super great i did not see will smith in that role at all will smith 
was he had his mannerisms, he had his mouth. I mean, he was totally Mr. Williams in that movie. Yeah, I thought so, Sissy. I was about to bring that up. Did Zoe she? Saldana. Yes, she did. I, well, I didn't see the movie, actually. Well, again, for me, it's like, oh, my goodness gracious. There are so many good, amazing singers. Like, who's that chick that was on private practice, you know, back in the day? Black chick. Black Remember sometimes. Tay Diggs? Remember Tay Diggs was on that show? The oh, woman who yes, played I... his ex-wife. She's a Broadway star. <laughs> um, there are so many um, amazing black singers who would have taken that. Her daughter. Audra McDonald. Happy. Yes, Audra McDonald. Her daughter wasn't happy with the choice. Well, and that's the thing. Like, you have to talk to the family, in my opinion. Uh, look at this House of Gucci debacle that's going on this movie, oh, yeah. which looks like a complete, that, that's another one circling the drain. It looks like it a looks, complete disaster. It looks satirical. Was it supposed to be satirical? No, it looks well, like no. a... I mean, in the, a little bit, but it was based off of a book that wasn't accurate in the first place, and the Gucci family is mad. That's a place where, again, you're being picked typically to fill a role, to look like a person, mm -hmm. to have their mannerisms. Though <coughs> Adam Driver looks about as Italian as this <coughs> bottle of ginger beer um, and sounds about as Italian as well. So I'm just going to say, but you know, in, in the performing arts, like you said, there's going to be judgment. It's going mm -hmm. to be superficial first. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the beast. And, you know, again, it's, it, if it's a real person that you're supposed to be emulating, doesn't it have to be that way, kind of? Mm-hmm. Zendaya. I, yes, 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 yes. We, we hear you. So, but it's, you know, again, going, going back to that, I, I felt like that whole group of people I was like wow if if you can't deal with your professor saying these things to you if you can't walk into a room and not see your name and 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 become deeply offended you're in the wrong profession you need to stop you, you need to stop you need to just go on over to Try engineering. <laughs> you just go on over and That should not have been the case. Why? How come somebody can just toot their horn and say, I was offended? Right. Okay. You can be offended, but was that person trying to be offensive? And it was it worth losing his job? I mean, again, we were just talking about the politicians and the jihad squad. And why they still have their he, jobs. Why doesn't he rank higher than those kids who won't be there but for four or five years? See, I think there's probably something else that happened. They probably wanted to get rid of him in the first place. And if he had tenure, I don't necessarily know that they could even have him in this situation. Mm -hmm. not, there, I do believe that there's a little bit of something missing in the story, but I will also say though that we see these things all the time nowadays. Right. Where you know somebody starts clutching their pearls, everyone starts running around. There's there's this whole pig pen of of dirt, and when mm -hmm. the dirt settles, you know the, everything is upside down. That's not you're not promoting equity or allyship or growth or diversity or anything like that, what you're doing is appeasing the loudest person or people. And right. that's not growth either. Yeah. And the loudest, and again, where's the standard for their complaint? Where's the merit and why I'm still stuck on why that even needed to be explained. I was literally like, I have walked into so many conference rooms and meeting rooms and lecture halls and seen stuff written on a board and, and literally I'm just like oh that must have been from the previous class and it, it, I, I just didn't under I just it's like 
we're down to that now. We're down to people having to be so cognizant of erasing a dry erase board. Really? As not to offend someone? We shouldn't have to be that way. No, we shouldn't. I think it's no. gone a little bit overboard. You know, I don't know if you've uh, listened to any of John McWhorter's um, complaints these days. Uh, he is a writer. Um, he's written for the Times, but he has a book. He's basically saying that, and do I agree with him 100%? I don't even agree, agree with myself 100% of the time. I'm going to tell you that. But, you know, he said this whole idea of anti-racism has been co-opted and turned into more of a, like of a culty type of drum. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, we are too busy judging and abolishing and attacking and canceling mm-hmm. people to really realize that we're actually making things much worse. And mm-hmm. I, I think there's a lot of truth to that because you know, it's one thing to want to cancel somebody that's intentionally creating harm you know, in solidarity for the harmed. It's another thing to just jump on the bandwagon and, and want to cancel somebody because you read in a book somewhere that that could be the right thing to do, but you can't remember what book it was in. And, and maybe it wasn't right, but, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to just do it anyway. People's mm-hmm. lives are being ruined here. It's also the it's also the jump. I I, I agree. Um, I I did read that article. I agree with him. Um, it was a very, you know, as I was reading it, I was like, oh wow, what a perspective. I read a little bit more, and I realized we have actually, you and I have actually discussed some of what he was saying. It's like you have to let people in. You have to understand Absolutely. their perspective. And, you know, there, of course, there are some things that are just blatantly racist. Uh, there, there are. I can't tell you that Rittenhouse was racist or I'm... is racist. What he was allowed to do was to take advantage of the privilege that is already there. I think and... the law that let him get off was written with racist <laughs> undertones. That was intentional. But I don't yes. lay all of that on him. No, but then he was also held on high. But there were a lot of things that converged on him. So it's easy to look at that circumstance and be like, oh, he's racist. Is it though? Not, I think that's mm, the easy answer. I think that's the low. No, that, that's what I yeah, said. I mean, that, yeah. But, but easy... <laughs> I, I actually think it's a jump. Like you said, it's a jump to, to, to just jump to that, to say, oh, he, it's kind of like the people that are still stuck on that his mom drove him to the place with the gun. You know, we already know that the facts say that that's not what really happened. That was an error in reporting that the media conveniently took a little bit of too much time to clear up. <laughs> but, you know, hanging on to that allows for people to just not have to change their minds yes and that's a lot easier than having to say oh, you know yes. what? i made a mistake or making people choose right now you did this thing that makes you racist and then sometimes it's like <laughs> you did this thing because you're just dumb and young it's it's not allowing someone or some people just are um they uh, they act out of habit. They do things out of habit. It is not a, um, there is no malicious intent. There's no malintent. And so you have someone who's just used to being able to do something a certain way. Well, if you converge onto their path and all of a sudden you're like, wow, that action lacks sensitivity. It could be deemed as racism. It could be considered racism, but that wouldn't necessarily mean that that was that person's intent. That's just their conveyor belt that they've been on. And when you don't take two seconds to step back and go, what's their intent behind this? Because you have a conversation with some people sometimes and you're like, 
so what do you think about that thing that you just did or that thing that you just said? Oh, I do this all the time. I've done this. My mom has done it. Her grandmother, you know, my grandmother has done it. And then you go, have you ever considered it from this perspective? They may not have. That's what's missing. The willingness to have a conversation about why someone views something. Here's an easy one. <clears throat> Touching hair. And I usually just saw this on Facebook. I don't know if you guys saw this. There was a teacher. She's a black teacher. I don't know her name, so I'm not even going to say her name. But she got her hair done in Bantu knots. <laughs> and a white woman responded, oh, my gosh, it's so cute. And she knows her. I guess she takes Pilates with her. She's like, oh, my gosh, it's so cute, but it would make me want to, like, um, pull at your hair. And so then I looked for the black teacher. It's coming. I don't know if you guys know what Bantu knots are, but they're they're literally little knots, and you you twist the hair around, and you can create a pattern. They can be big. They can be small. And no, they were not created on the runways of Paris. Um, it's a it's a very typical black hairstyle. But I was like, the woman who said it, I was like did she really just say she would touch a black woman's hair? Like that was, that was like, <laughs> like that's where my body went. And, <laughs> and then, and then I, I read the, the back and forth between them. They have a relationship and I don't believe that was, I don't believe she was crossing the line. Right. But the minute that I read it, I was like, <laughs> like what are you talking about? Maybe she doesn't know. And I don't and I think that she was just because they look like little knots. They are ornamental. They stick out. It would be something that if you were holding a baby, I'm pretty sure a baby would grab it. <laughs> but it's such a visceral response as a black woman to to, to you know, to even think about someone touching your hair without permission or as, as if it were a novelty. But I don't believe that that's the relationship that the two people that were having the conversation, I don't believe that that's their relationship. They have a relationship that might be okay with that. But, you know, if I just jump in with guns blazing and I, because there, that would also be disrespectful of me had I commented Ah, why are you touching the black woman's hair? That would have been disrespectful to their relationship, even though I would have been trying to like help a black sister out. But my action, I believe would have been insensitive had I commented. And those are the things that people aren't, they're not taking the time. No, you can't touch my hair, but they have a relationship. You can't run. <laughs> from the place of assumption. And, you know, the other thing is, is when we're viewing things from our own personal lens, we have to recognize that we're the only ones with those lenses. Mm -hmm. You know, I, have you ever tried sharing glasses with somebody? It doesn't really work very well. And Correct. you get a headache or one of you gets a headache. And that's, that's what we have to consider. It, it kind of comes back to language, right? There's, mm -hmm. uh, there's, places in our language that we know are no longer appropriate, things that we shouldn't say or do. Mm -hmm. When we come across, for example, somebody in the older generations who has, you've mentioned your dad, he says certain things and you're like, dad, you can't say that. And like, oh, well, you can be like four million years old. You know, we, there are places where we have to be realistic when it comes to somebody like that, mm -hmm. or at least offer, start a line of communication. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know, I understand that you think that term is like really great because you s learned it when you were born in 1804. <laughs> but you know what, we really don't say those things socially anymore. Like it's just not acceptable. You could wound somebody with that. And very often, People be like, oh, you know, my bad. I, I won't do that again. Sometimes they'll say, I am 422. I'm going to say whatever I want. I think that there can be communication and there can be respect. To jump right into 
oh man, her dad's a racist because he used the O word or whatever it is. Like, again, it's, it's not fair. Maybe he just didn't know. Not everybody comes from the same lines of, of education, communication. A lot of people don't use social media. There are people that aren't really sure that there's a movement going on right now. <laughs> you know? And we also have, we have news media. We have all of these communication <laughs> sources that nobody really knows how to navigate. Right. And what I mean is, there's going to be false information here, there, everywhere. There's going to be people out there saying that they are the alpha and the omega of whatever the subject matter is mm -hmm. and, and positioning themselves as experts when they're just not. If right. we're only going to those sources for information, then we're going to have big trouble on our hands when somebody else says, who told you that? And no, that's completely ridiculous. And no, I don't feel that way. It's the idea of allowing people to have their own thoughts and feelings and opinions and share them because you've started a conversation versus judging, stereotyping, and, and putting everybody into this monolithic box, right. and assuming that they're all going to be the same way. This is the problem that I see happening so much in all of these conversations. It's ridiculous. And I think if someone says something offensive, um, I, I think it's saying, I, I think it's saying, you know, when you say that, um, it hurts my feelings or it makes me feel this way, which is not necessarily attacking them. It's, it's an expression of how you feel. We, I, I'm sure you guys have heard that there are basically, um, I'm oversimplifying this. There is anger or being sad and there's being happy or joy. Most other emotions fall into that category. Um, and it's taking a step back and realizing if you've asked someone to do something one time, two times, three times, four times, and you start to get pissed off, really you're frustrated. Mm -hmm. You know, your frustration <laughs> is coming out as anger, but, but really you're frustrated. Um, whether it's because you don't feel like that person has shown, um, you've expressed this is important, but that person is not taking it as, as if it's important to you. This is irritating, you are frustrated, um, you are disappointed, but it may be anger that's coming out. So you take a step back and you, you say to someone, um, Hey, hi, I'm Nikki. I'm a recovering control freak, and I'm about to take my control freakery back. Um, you, you express why, yes, <laughs> that's it. And everything else falls into that category. They're right. all expressions in some way um, or another harmony to show basic emotions, happiness, sadness, disgust, fear, surprise, and anger and everything else is sort of an offshoot of those emotions. And we tend to express in very simplistic forms, angry, 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 happy, 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 <laughs> angry, angry. There is, you know, we tend to express. And then when you take a step back and you realize, you know, <laughs> you reached over to touch my hair without my permission, you're in my space. It makes me feel fill in the blank versus punching the person and saying, WTF, don't touch my hair. You're not explaining to them why. And, and although it should be clear why you, they, you're not a pet and they shouldn't just touch you, but we have to, and that's, that's the example that I chose to use. We have to step into those spaces um, where we are able to hear what someone is saying and understand where it's coming from. We did this with our kids and I said, you, you gotta clean your rooms. 
And I said, what's your standard for cleaning your room? And <laughs> Harvey. You know what, Harmony? I like that. Harmony said basic emotions you can't touch this. But you know what? There is kind of a, a personal space problem, right? There are people that just feel like they can touch yeah. you, period. It's not even just yeah. about touching hair. It's like, oh, hi, we just met, but I'm going to hold your hand. Ew, your hand. <laughs> just don't touch my hand. Like, I hate when people do that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a thing, too. Like, Except for if it's like an old black lady. I don't want any ladies of any shape touching my hands. Don't. Oh, I don't mind it if it's an old black lady. Because they're, they're going to impart some wisdom. And, and they, they want to do it mentally, physically, verbally. Right. <laughs> so I asked my sons, <laughs> hey, like, what's your like, standard? <laughs> yeah. What's your standard for cleaning your room? I said, because you're ignoring mine. And I said, so what's your standard? And they actually had to think about it. And they actually had to go, oh, okay, you're right. Maybe it doesn't have to be your standard. But they admitted that it wasn't, there, there was no standard. Their version was no standard. Their rooms were just a hot mess. And so then they said, can we have something in the middle? And I said, okay, you can have something in the middle, but they, but, but you got a week to prove that you can do something in the middle. Otherwise it goes back to my standard. But the point is just the clean your room, clean your room, because I said so, that wasn't working. They weren't hearing that. Being able to put it in a different perspective, my perspective, their perspective, and then having that made them see, look, if you want people to hear you, experience you, listen to what you're saying, sometimes you have to present it. You're, if you're saying the same thing over and over again, they static. They turned on the white noise. <laughs> they turned on the white noise and you're just sitting there you know, getting angrier and angrier and everybody has to take a step back so that we can step forward because as long as we keep passing each other, like, you know, it's like bad postmodern dance. It's Ooh. like when you live with somebody, <laughs> oh, like, I can't tell you how many times I tell Glenn, like, put your damn shit in the dishwasher. Put it in the dishwasher. You just used it. Put it in the dishwasher. It's not that hard. Put it in the dishwasher. Put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> Put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> Put it in the dishwasher. I mean, that's going to be my next hit. <laughs> Put it in the dishwasher. But he still won't hear it. So, I, I mean, at the end, <laughs> yes. I am Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, wah, wah. That's how I feel, too. Like, I don't even want to hear it in my own head. When we have these conversations... In the same way, over and over and over again, emotional intelligence leading to communication. Exactly. And it takes both social and emu emotional intelligence to be able to pivot and say, you know what? Uh, I'm not reaching him with this dishwasher situation. so many big words. So late, Carrie. Carrie, you're right. Don't listen to that. I'm going to just wind up. I'm going to talk for another four hours. By myself. Um, <laughs> Look at all those syllables. But it's that. But that's the thing, right? If you are a big syllable, big syllable, big word <laughs> type of person, and they're talking to you like it's a Dick and Jane thriller, you know, <laughs> you're not going to hear them. So you have to find another way, and you have to be really, really nimble. You have to be able to pivot and say it in a way that they can understand or draw a picture, or make a needle point, or whatever it is. But home sweet home. if you're trying to make change happen, there is no singular approach to getting there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not at all. I don't know, Carrie. I, I think you might have wiped me out on that one. Carrie <laughs> is fabulous. I bet you she enunciates when she swears, too, just like me. <laughs> And I am a wordy. 
every single syllable. That's the way it should be. Anyway, guys, it's about that time. It is. Oh, people are joining and we have to go. Listen, learn, Ooh. talk. Is that better? Ooh, she broke it down to you and kissed she her. Did. Bring it, Carrie. Carrie's our girl for the night. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, I, I thank you for joining us tonight. Next week, we're back on Friday, aren't we? Yes. Yes. So next Friday, 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 in the land of people that want to be Eastern, but they're stuck in the Midwest. So sorry for you. One day you'll get to the big girl time zone. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Where it doesn't thanks. get dark at 4.30. <laughs> oh my God, it's so dark. I'm so ready for July. Why can't it be July? December, it. July. <laughs> I mean, you say that like there's a problem with it. I think it's fabulous. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next week, I hope. On thought, oh, sissy, I'm sorry. Maybe one day we'll be back to all Thursdays. Sissy, I have kids with activities. She has a lot of kids and a lot of activities. They, I do. I do. So, me like you Friday. Well, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Anyway, kids, thank you again. Have a great, great weekend. And uh, if you do find yourself in conversations that you just really feel like you need to have them, but they're not going your way, take a Listen, breath. learn, talk. Listen, <laughs> learn, and talk. But listen to hear and learn. Don't listen to rebut. Because that gets in a way, and that's another talk for another day. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>